Thank you guys for sticking around. This is the last one. You guys know me. I'm Ben. Today we're going to be talking about effects of diet and lifestyle on cardiovascular and respiratory disease. Throughout these uh, 14 weeks, we've seen the whole gamut of them. And so I wanted to change it up a little bit and do something a little different here. So let's talk about heart disease. So as you guys know, this is the number one killer in America. 600,000 people a year die from heart disease. So this beats out cancer at number two and iatrogenesis at number three, i.e. hospitals, drugs, and surgery killing people. So 715,000 people every year will get a heart attack. And not only is this a big toll on human life, this is rather expensive as well. Uh, so between like hospital visits, drugs, and surgery, we're looking at 313 billion with a B. So you could buy a lot of drone strikes and bank bailouts with that money. <laughs> so let's look at the current medical treatment model. So we got heart surgery. We got your stents, your bypasses, statin drugs to lower your cholesterol, blood pressure, blood pressure medications to lower your blood pressure, and mainstream diet and lifestyle guidelines. So if we drill down on these, heart surgery is going to cost about $100,000 to $200,000. And I don't know about you, but if one of my parents had that, it would be a pretty bad financial shape for us. It's not something everybody can afford. And the other thing is that most people die anyway within a year or two after having the surgery. So statin drugs, uh, they do lower your cholesterol. They, they, it looks good on paper, but it doesn't even always lower the incidence of actual cardiac events. So not very effective, and we have the harmful side effects to the liver and things like that. Blood pressure medications, only prescribed in the case of when you have the like, highest like malignant hypertension. Does anybody know why? So the reason why is that it lowers your blood pressure so much that the drug can actually kill you from lowering your blood pressure. So the only reason that they give the drug to you is if you have a lesser chance of dying from the drug than you do your own high blood pressure. <laughs> so and this, is, this is just factual information, guys. I'm not like trying to put down the medical profession here. So we've got um, mainstream diet and lifestyle guidelines. Well, the American Heart Association says, Get your cholesterol under 200. You know, uh, don't eat a lot of salt. Eat you know low-fat milk. But the problem is that people still die. So now you must be thinking like, it's just every all my patients are just going to die from heart disease no matter what I do. Well, maybe there's a better way. So imagine being magically whisked away to China. <laughs> I'm in China. So there was a nutrition professor by the name of Dr. T. Colin Campbell who in the 70s was trying to help with uh, nutrition issues in third world countries and he noticed that people in uh, rural China rarely ever die from heart disease and a lot of the other problems that we as Westerners have. So he set out to do a 30-year epidemiological study, basically studied uh, diet and lifestyle of rural China and diet and lifestyle of of Americans and got you know millions of data points on all kinds of things. So this was a, most, one of the most exhaustive, longest studies of nutrition ever, uh, ever to be done. And so I know what you guys are thinking, like, does this mean I got to eat cats and dogs and a bunch of weird vegetables? <laughs> so the good news is no. Let's look at the diet of rural China. So we've got rice. We all know that they eat a lot of rice and other grains, vegetables. Grain, uh, beans and legumes, and my personal favorite, the fruits. <laughs> so this is about 90% of what they eat. And the other 10% is animal products, meat, fish, uh, dairy, eggs, fowl, all that, and none of the processed food, Coca-Colas and chips and all that that we have. They eat whole plant foods, okay? These foods are zero cholesterol. So it's not, cholesterol is not found in plant foods, only in animal foods. If you look at our diet here in the States, well, we've got 62% processed foods. That's where we're getting our calories from, white sugar, white flour, and oils. Another uh, quarter of it is from animal products, and then only 12% from uh, whole plant foods that the rural Chinese people eat. So it's basically flipped on its side. And so the data clearly shows that 
from the study, the 30-year study, that the more plant foods that they eat, the less likely they were to contract uh, heart disease and other uh, Western diets, uh, Western-related diseases that they don't see in China. So what's cool is that there's also a cool clinical side to this. And if you guys know about the um, in Functional Medicine Club, we had this guy give a talk. He was a heart surgeon who, he's an MD, and he was basically said that he was sick and tired of doing these heart surgeries for people, and then they would just die anyway a few years later. And so he wanted to come up with a different way to treat people, and he had heard about this other study, and so he did his own clinical study. Originally had 24 patients, basically put them on a whole food, plant-based diet, so grains, beans, legumes, fruits and vegetables, and got their cholesterol to below 150. And he found that, uh, so originally of the 24 patients, uh, three dropped out of the study, couldn't stick with the diet, they passed away over the course of the study. One guy, he already had a uh, aortic rupture, he died during the course of the study, but the rest of them, these were people who had severe heart disease, who had already had a heart attack, who had already had cardiac problems. Some of them, their cardiologist told them, okay, go home, prepare your affairs, like there's nothing we can do, you're gonna die soon. And so this guy was the last resort for them, and the, the clinical data, and there's been other uh, clinical studies on this too, have shown that these people's like, heart disease was reversed. Like they went, you could see, I have a copy of his book here, did you see angiograms, like a giant coronary artery blockage, and then uh, a few months into the diet, it's reduced, and within a year or two, it's completely gone. So you may be asking, why haven't we heard about this before? Well, it makes a lot of sense, but it doesn't make a lot of dollars, okay? Like we talked about, the surgeries are expensive, the drugs are expensive, these things make money. Uh, the average MD student receives about three hours of nutrition education in medical school, and it's basically a radical, or you could call a conservative shift from the way we've been doing things. And Dr. Esselstyn is quoted as saying, some people think that the plant-based whole food diet is extreme. Half a million a year will have their chest opened up, a vein taken from their legs, and sewn onto their coronary artery. Some people would call that extreme. So as doctors of chiropractic, this is a golden opportunity for us. Uh, you know, at the philosophical core of chiropractic, the way it was originally constructed, we didn't believe in drugs or surgery, and the evidence clearly shows that they don't really work that well. So this is our chance to shine and basically knock out America's number one killer. And I know some of you guys are gonna go out there and maybe you're just like, look, I'm just gonna rack them and crack them and put them on e stim and build Blue Cross and let the checks roll in, and that's fine. But if you guys are like me, like I, have a, I seriously want to help people, and I wanna do what it takes. Uh, so transitioning to a diet like this is, it's not super, super easy, but it's not super hard either. So it's doable. Um, one last thing, because I was asked to, it also has shown efficacy against respiratory diseases. Uh, for example, this study shows that children who ate uh, higher volumes of fruits and vegetables, uh, things like that, had a lower incidence of asthma, and also effective for another bunch of unrelated diseases, osteoporosis, type two diabetes. So this is it. I have copies of these books if you want to check them out. Uh -huh.